Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Tuesday, April 27th, and we have some showers in the area and possible severe storms later on today, but we'll talk to Justin in a little while. Well, last year, summer camps were canceled for obvious reasons, and the CDC says we're good to go. We just need to take some extra steps this year. New guidance was released from this uh, over the weekend and applies to both day and overnight camps from the CDC. And obviously they're stressing the importance of wearing masks, social distancing, and getting vaccinated as soon as possible. Uh, it says that the guidance that camps must continue prevention measures such as mask wearing, like Mark said, and physical density, even after employees have been fully vaccinated. So they say everyone in the camp facilities must wear well-fitting masks at all times with exceptions for certain activities such as eating, drinking, and swimming. So why take all these extra precautions as Steph and I continue to pull some nuggets out of this NPR.org article? Obviously, none of the three COVID-19 vaccines available in the U.S. have been authorized for use in children under the age of 16. So hence all the, the extra measures that they need to take place. So uh, uh, well-fitting masks, all times, exceptions, of course, eating, drinking, swimming. Guidance recommends disposable masks or cloth masks with two or more layers of fabric. I uh, also suggest creating cohorts or groups of campers and staff that stay together throughout the day and limiting exposure between them. It says camps should require at least three feet between campers without a group and while six feet of distance is required in other situations, including during mealtimes and between campers and staff. CDC also says most activities should take place outdoors and camps should adopt ventilation and disinfection practices for indoor spaces. They should also teach and reinforce hygiene practices such as frequent hand washing and limiting sharing of objects. And one thing that they do discourage is close contact and indoor spaces, noting the increased risk of spreading COVID-19 in those situations. Last paragraph, it also outlines steps campers should take before they get there, such as quarantining in line with travel guidance and either getting vaccinated or tested within a certain time frame. Upon getting home, campers and staff who are not fully vaccinated should get a viral test after three to five days and self-quarantine for a week. But CDC says, uh, again, CDC says summer camps, let's do it this yeah, year. It's good to go with, uh, with some recommendations. Let's try to get back to normal. Yeah, let's look at today's nine at nine. Results from an independent autopsy for Andrew Brown Jr. will be released today. Attorney for Brown's family called the shooting an execution after watching 20 seconds of body camera video showing deputies in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, shooting Brown last week. Attorneys for former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger will appeal her murder conviction today, arguing she should have been charged with criminally negligent homicide instead. In 2019, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison for shooting and killing her neighbor, Botham Jean. President Joe Biden will announce a new guidance from the CDC on outdoor mask wearing during his state of the pandemic remarks today. The new recommendations will likely ease guidance for people who are fully vaccinated. The United States will share millions of doses of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine with other countries soon. The vaccine has not been granted emergency youth authorization by the FDA yet, so tens of millions of stockpiled units are untouched. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg says Bear County recorded its lowest COVID-19 positivity rate ever at 1.9%. That's also the lowest in the state of Texas. 2020 census shows the U.S. population top 331 million people. Texas will gain two congressional seats. Colorado, Florida, Montana, North Carolina, and Oregon will each gain one. But California, Illinois, Michigan, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia each lose a seat. A hearing in Britney Spears' conservatorship case is set for this afternoon. The singer is trying to get her father removed as her conservator. Her attorney filed a petition last month to replace him with Jody Montgomery. Cowboys linebacker Sean Lee is retiring from the NFL. He finishes as Dallas's eighth ranked all time leading tackler. Apple rolls out privacy changes for iOS today. Users will be able to decide whether they will allow apps to track them across other companies' apps and websites. And that's today's 9 at 9.
can't forget to wish our very own Erica Hernandez a happy birthday yes, today. Yes, happy birthday. Hope you enjoy your day. Usually she's celebrating with Fiesta, but it's, it's all your day today, this time around. It, it is. Let's go outside with uh, live cam. Early, early this morning we had mist, and then we had some showers. Where are we at as of 902, Justin? Same thing. Mist, drizzle, some showers out there. We're going to see this soften on through about the first half of the day. May taper off a little bit this afternoon, but then we'll turn our attention to what's going to go on out west could see some stronger storms out uh, in places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass. So let's look at the radar right now. Uh, the data is a little jumpy here, but you get the general idea. We've got uh, scattered showers around the area. All of this is pretty light, but it's enough to you know, create some wet roads, make some slick conditions out there, and you'll want to grab the umbrella today if you have it with you. Uh, you'll probably want it with you through the afternoon. Visibility wise, it's down to about a mile burning stage. Rock Springs is about a quarter of a mile. So there is some fog out there. It hasn't been too much of an issue. Temperatures are warm 60s and 70s for the most part. And pollen count is in. No surprise here. Molds in the high category 1,130. Uh, pecan stays moderate. Oak is low. Forecast today, 30% chance of showers. Maybe a few rumbles of thunder. Temperatures in the low 80s because of the cloud cover and potential for rain. Then again, we are watching what's going to go on out west tonight. Some severe storms, better chance of storms tomorrow. We're going to break down all of this and talk rainfall totals coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Quick look at uh, Transguide right now. And since the early morning edition of GMSA, roads have dried out quite a bit, but we do still have some moisture out there. Be careful out there. Looks like the evening commute could be our next problem area. Top stories we are following today. San Antonio police are investigating a carjacking and a dragging that happened on the city's west side early this morning. Police say the victim showed up at a home on West Travis around four this morning, woke up the people inside and told them he had been shot and run over by a car. When officers arrived, they found no evidence of gunshot wounds, but they did notice a large amount of road rash indicating may have been dragged by a vehicle. The man told police that he was sitting in his car when a group of people jumped him and then drove away with his car. Investigators are still looking for both the suspects and the victim's car. Children's shelter here in San Antonio had to find new homes for its children. This after the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services issued a placement hold due to unacceptable conditions and an ongoing capacity problem. On Thursday, the department sent a letter to the Children's Shelter Executive Officer Annette Rodriguez about Family Tapestry, a foster care group formed by the Children's Shelter in 2018. Family Tapestry recently rejected the referral of six children into its care and has also failed to find a place for three children who were staying in the DFPS office according to the letter. Rodriguez said Family Tapestry lost 475 treatment beds over the past year, making it difficult to take in children who need help. Bear County Children's Court Judge Peter Sakai says this isn't only a San Antonio problem, but a statewide crisis. We have a lot of placements that are saying we can't do this anymore. We can't do this for the reimbursement that we're getting. We can't do it for the liability that's being incurred. The children had to be out of the shelter by five last night and the CEO had to present a plan to the state on how it will meet its contract requirements. The CEO says she'll have more information on that plan tomorrow. A reminder, today is your last chance to vote early in the San Antonio City election and tens of thousands of ballots have already been cast. Polls are open through 8 p.m. tonight. On the ballot, the race for San Antonio mayor, several city council seats, and propositions A and B. You can find a sample ballot as well as proposition explainers and candidate Q&As right now on KSET.com. Election day is May 1st. There has been controversy surrounding Prop B. Voters are set to decide whether the police union here in San Antonio will keep its right to collectively bargain with the city. If you're unsure of what exactly that means, KSET has you covered. Tonight we'll air a special presentation of KSET Explains Proposition B. You can watch it right here on KSET 12 at 6.30 p.m. Right now it's 9.07. San Antonio has a huge hospitality industry and now a huge need to fill some of our jobs. Max Massey joins us live from Mitiera. And Max, what does the need for jobs look like out there? Guys, there is a huge need. Obviously, the last year has been unique, to say the least, but there's such a big need that when you even go to sign up for the Wi-Fi, it asks you if you're interested in job opportunities here. So we're joined here with Ricardo. So, Ricardo, what has the last year looked like for you guys? Well, last year was crazy. It was hard for everybody, you know, all the world. But over here in La Familia Cortes restaurants, we had to close this restaurant, Mi Tierra Cafe. It was like that point. 
But now we're looking better, right? We're coming back. We're getting busy right now. So look better. And there is a big need for jobs. So how many jobs are you guys looking to fill? We're looking at 180 people right now, okay? Including food servers, bartenders, dishwasher, line cooks, even managers. I mean, we're looking for everything and we have it right here, man. All right, now Mitiera and the Cortez family, a huge part of our hospitality industry, but we're gonna throw some stats out you that you should see on the screen. Now, right now, the unemployment rate across the San Antonio area is at 6.8%, and for every job posting, there are 3.67 job seekers available, meaning, basically, the demand for jobs in the hospitality industry is high, and next week, there is a two-day job fair. So before we let you go, before we throw it back to Mark and Stephanie, Ricardo, what kind of people are you looking for, and what is your pitch to anyone listening? Okay, look, we're looking for everybody who wants to work, wants to rob up over here, and my speech is, I mean, we have the jobs over here. Come by and apply, or apply and join the familia, okay? There you go, that was perfect. Carlo, thank you so much for your time. There you go. If you need a job, come here and apply for it. Coming up at 9.30, we're gonna speak with the CEO of Workforce Solutions, Alamo. Talk about the big picture of filling all these jobs. Guys, back to you. Well, they're ready for the crowds, I think. Yeah, huge <laughs> sector of our local economy, hotel, motel, food service. So, yeah, we'll have more coming up right now, 909, about 70 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Starting today, Apple will let you choose if you want apps on your phone to track you. Why this new feature could be both a good thing and a bad thing. Back-to-back -back wins for our Spurs after a huge overtime victory against the Wizards in Washington last night. We'll check in with David and RJ to see if this improves their standing. Police in Colorado facing backlash after video appears to show officers laughing at the arrest of a woman with dementia. After the break, Davis here shows us the video so you can judge for yourself. Let's take a look at stocks right now. The Dow is down about 20 points at 33,964. And welcome back. It's about 913 in your morning headlines. We are going to show you some distressing video of police arresting a 73 year old woman. We also have a story about some hero police officers. Add to that a car explosion and a daring attempt to stop an out of control driver in a town square. David Sears is here with those stories and much more. Good morning. That last one was like right out of the Marvel comics. I want to see it. Superhero. Pretty good. We'll show you that in just a second. But first, let's start with this. This could be some disturbing video to some of you. This is a 73 year old woman taken to the ground by police in a town called Loveland, just north of Denver, Colorado. Not once or twice. She was put on the ground three times and handcuffed. The woman, Karen Gardner, has dementia. Initially, she was trying to leave a Walmart without paying for $14 worth of plants. Employee tried to stop her. Now, here's where the story takes an alarming twist. The officers who made the arrest are sitting in the station watching the hour long video, laughing at what took place while she was being held just a few feet away. They were also making comments along the way. They had a fist bump going. Yeah. Lawsuit has been filed against the police department alleging Gardner suffered a broken arm and a dislocated shoulder. In the video, the police pretty much acknowledged she was injured. Her lawyer says it took several hours before she received any medical attention. An investigation is underway. What's going on at this police department for somebody to act like this? What's wrong with their culture? You have to see it to believe it, right? And, and when, you, when you do see it, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I very much suspect it. This is what it was going on. Leave no stone unturned. It's very important to do that. Public trust and law enforcement have to go together. Anytime that fractures, uh, that, that is a, a situation that is uh, disappointing. By the way, the incident happened last summer. The video is just being released. And according to Gardner's lawyer and her daughter-in-law, the woman is now in assisted living and scared to live alone. All right, now let's get to some hero cops in Atlanta. You're looking at body cam video of several police officers rushing to the aid of driver. That driver involved in an accident while he was having a seizure. He became trapped inside the car. The car caught on fire. The officers were able to break the window and then pull the driver out. The driver and a couple of officers were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Everybody expected to be okay. All right, now you are riding down Highway 114 with, in South Lake, Texas. Were you with Steven Pacino? Look at right there. Watch the car. See the fire. Ooh, get out of the way. Wow. 
car just explodes while it's sitting on the side of the road. Yeah, the grassy area around the car on fire. Had to shut down two or three lanes of traffic for a while before they could get that thing under control. There's a look at the car after they finally got the fire out. The good news is no one was hurt. DPS released a video and said, if you are ever in that situation where your car is smoking, pull over. They will be more than happy to come help you out and make sure you are safe. And finally this morning, let's take you to Albania. Some guy in a car driving backwards through the town square. Watch right there on the side of your screen. Watch, watch right over there, and you'll see a guy just come out of nowhere and jump. Do you see that? Okay, there's another angle of that. This guy just jumps right through the passenger or the driver's side window. There it is right there. Did you see that again? See the guy right there? He just jumped right in there. Yeah, he said, hey, he was just trying to stop him. And you can barely see it, but you see him jump through the window. Like I said, it looked like one of those Marvel comics. <laughs> yeah, the guy's a regular hero. He goes feet first through the window. That was Clodian Alquini. He said after it was all over that he didn't know how he did it, but he felt like doing it and went for it. He did. He said he hit the driver in the face with both legs, and then other people grabbed him. Police said the driver was actually under the influence of narcotics and believe it or not no one was hurt after you've seen the video several wow. times you can tell where he jumps through the window you but, can kind of see it in that one that other angle but that's that is an action star move isn't it that's timing yeah because yeah. the car's moving and he jumps in through the window and made it through the, the window face. got the driver out of the way yeah. able to bring things to a stop safely there's a lot going on there yeah. nobody hurt and right. it turned out okay. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. David. Thank you, David. Right now we're at 917, about 72 degrees, and Justin Horn is here with more. Uh, Steph was talking about the top of the newscast. We've had showers around. Yes. The problem, as you said, uh, is going to be later on into the evening hours. There's a chance for some severe storms out west. Some of those could get a little closer to San Antonio tonight. I really think the big show, though, is going to be tomorrow night into mm. Thursday morning. So we're going to have a couple chances here. Let's talk uh, about the headlines today. Some drizzle this morning, then some isolated showers. We're already really seeing that. Some showers on the radar at this hour. And then tonight, severe storms out west, as we mentioned. The question is, will they hold together all the way to San Antonio? I think there's some questions there uh, whether or not that happens, but we'll watch it. Storms likely tomorrow night, though, and some could be strong to severe. So busy next couple days. Here's a look at the visible satellite and radar. We've got some showers out there, maybe a few rumbles of thunder in parts of Alverde County, but these showers will work their way across the area. We'll see some showers here in San Antonio, some off and on isolated showers today. We're not looking for any severe weather, I think, at least not the next several hours. It'll just be uh, mainly shower activity. And looking at the water vapor, there's our storm system, and this is the one that'll be pulling in tomorrow and bringing us even better chances for rain. In the meantime, we still have those little disturbances that are working in from the south and west. So here's our forecast today. And uh, by five o'clock, we've got some showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder out there. And then look what happens as we get towards 10 o'clock. Some bigger storms out west. Edwards Plateau on the Rio Grande. We could see some storms in this particular model does hold some of that activity together and brings it towards San Antonio in the overnight hours. That possibility is there. We'll certainly watch the radar closely for you tonight. Of course, Adam Kask, will be here uh, watching it uh, during the night beat. Uh, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, things quiet down a little bit, and I think we see a break in the action until we get to tomorrow afternoon. Then we start to see more storms developing out west. Coming off the mountains of Mexico, these will likely be strong, if not severe. These work their way east. This is 7 o'clock. If we can get a cluster of storms going, which looks like we may, those will work towards San Antonio and the parts of the viewing area through 10 o'clock. And this is where we could see some of the strong to severe storms, uh, and that will go into Thursday, early Thursday morning as well. Severe weather potential today, generally west of San Antonio, west of, of I-35. Uh, this area is shaded in yellow. That's where uh, the risk will be today, large hail being the main threat, I think. Now we go into tomorrow. It does shift slightly farther east, include San Antonio tomorrow. Hail, gusty winds, still the main threats. And as we look at the rainfall potential, I think this is a good thing here. I mean, we don't want the severe weather, but at least uh, I think we'll get some good downpours in spots. Up to two inches, especially there in the parts of the hill country, but I'd say on, on average, half an inch to an inch for most of us, which we'll take. Outside right now, cloudy still with some fog and mist out there, 71. 
Fog is really starting to lift, though. You see uh, Bernie stage still down a little bit. Kerrville, Rock Springs also at a mile and a quarter. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. And the forecast for today, takes us up to 81 by 3 o'clock. We'll keep in a 30% chance of some showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder, and then we'll keep the chances tonight. The seven-day forecast uh, will go 30% chance of storms tonight here in San Antonio, should those storms hold together. 30% chance tomorrow, but the best chance is Wednesday night, Thursday morning, 70% chance of storms, and then we'll get the chance to likely clear out uh, Thursday, Friday into the weekend and temperatures will warm up as we get into next week as well. So have the case that weather app with you tonight, guys. We'll send out the alerts if we need to, if uh, and that'll be the case tomorrow, too. All right, a busy couple of days. Absolutely. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Right now, 921, about 72 degrees. And still head on GMSA at 9. Apple giving you more control over your privacy. After the break, a look at the pros and cons of this new feature. As we mentioned in the 9 at 9, Apple has introduced a feature that lets you choose if you want apps to track your activity in other apps. So what are some of the pros and cons to this? ABC's Megan Tabrizian explains. This morning, Apple taking a stand on privacy, releasing a new feature allowing customers to limit how much of their data is used and shared. It's a feature that gives you a choice. A choice on how apps use and share your data. The feature, dubbed App Tracking Transparency, will let you choose if you want your online activity tracked and sold to third parties, such as Facebook and other apps. How big a deal is this? It's a really big deal. It's a big move for Apple, and it's been something that they've been talking about publicly for a long time. I think prepping the world that this could be coming, and they've finally pulled the trigger on it. Apps commonly track data, such as your age, location, spending habits, and browsing history. That data can be used for things like tagging photos or mapping runs, but it's also sold to advertisers, which is why targeted ads have become so popular and lucrative. Digital has made it easy to track exactly who is watching your ad and what else are they doing and what are they buying and how are they behaving. Experts say this new feature may be a double-edged sword. It places power in the customer's hands in terms of privacy, but it also may hurt Facebook and the small businesses that benefit from ads on Facebook and Instagram. It's really difficult for people to find out about what you're selling. By leveraging Facebook services, a small business owner can pay for advertising and it's actually priced pretty well, and you can target that to the specific type of buyer that you're looking for. And for those folks, they're going to be really concerned because they have potential customers that could very well turn this off. The new privacy feature is part of an update to Apple's operating system. Next time iPhone users open an app, they'll receive a pop-up asking for consent to share their data. Megan Chavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. I wonder when they're going to let Megan go back to work. I know. Yeah. She's been at home for a while. So we're, we're not just sitting here uh, like uh, puppies with our heads cocked sideways during these stories. We're actually chatting about them, too. And I was just saying, well, do you know anybody that's going to continue to let Apple track your activity? Or, and, yeah. and then you were like, well. <laughs> I, I told Mark, I was like, I kind of like those targeted ads. Targeted ads. So I, I have a, a running app and that tracks where it runs. And sometimes I get sent, you know. Uh, information about running gear. So you're okay with some tracking? Well, I don't know, but but if it pops up like a pop-up, mm -hmm. I'll probably say no, though. Siri, remind me to track Stephanie's <laughs> activity later. All right now, Nigel, 27, 72 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. San Antonio woman turning 106 years old this week. How you can help her celebrate her special day. A Chucky doll in a dog body. A few weeks ago, we told you about this dog up for adoption. They had, Ad went viral on Facebook. Do you remember this? I do. Well, we have an update on the adoption status. And yay, an exciting overtime victory for our San Antonio Spurs. David and RJ are here to break down all of the best moments next. They're back. The Spurs are back. <laughs> Welcome back. We have good news. It was a wild win for the Spurs in our nation's capital. Spurs beat Washington in an overtime thriller. Big win for the Silver and Black, but they also lost a key player. David and RJ are here to break down last night's overtime win. Yeah, that hurt. It did hurt. It and uh, hurt. yeah, if you saw the, it, yeah. <laughs> any bit of the highlight, that definitely. I heard about it. it. I haven't seen it. Not yeah. sure if I want to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ankle. 
Yeah, he's Derek White's ankle roll. We have right now it's a sprained ankle, so the Spurs have not announced, uh, you know, whether he'll be out indefinitely or what the plan is. But Pop did say last night that it uh, did not look good. good. And that was pretty much the most information we have on mm-hmm. uh, Derek White's status right now. But something did look good last night. Oh, I was going to say. DeMar DeRozan yes. and the Spurs. Wow. <laughs> DeMar, where would the Spurs be without DeMar? I mean, this guy is um, I, absolutely I, I wish we could calculate that because I want to say he's won them like about seven, eight games by himself, especially with these late game. And here's this uh, Derek White thing, which, oh, yeah, okay. we could cover the covering the ankle Lost there. Mark. He ended up being helped off the court. Aww. But uh, as that David guys had a DeMar. rough year injury wise. Yes, Look at that. Look at DeMar down, down the lane. And ooh, look at DeMar down the mm. lane. And mm. ooh, look at. <laughs> No, that's not DeMar. <laughs> a lot of DeMar. I like a little bit of DeJounte, too. DeJounte, 25 points, 17 rebounds. Uh, great game from DeJounte as well. Spurs were down nine in the fourth quarter, which is like, you go, here you go again. Mm-hmm. Then they come back, and then this guy just went, mm-hmm. just went. Mm-hmm. That was for the, for the win for in the regulation. Win. You see, he yeah. just missed it by that much, and then they pretty much took over in overtime, and DeMar had a great game. And, you know, Bradley Beal, okay, so these are, these are two old-school guys. As we watch the rest of the highlights, let me tell yeah, you this. This was the final missed shot. Combined, now this is, a, this is a spur and a wizard, and that's all right. We're combining their two scores. They scored 82 between them. DeMar had 37, and Beal had 45. There Guess how many threes they made to get to 82 combined? How many? Zero. None. None. <laughs> Not a three among the two this guys. This makes David very happy. This is old school <laughs> basketball, and we yeah. love it. For for fans of like the ABA and those old school Spurs, I mean Washington went back in the day when they were known as the Bullets before they changed their name to the Wizards. Um, yeah, I mean this was an old school matchup, and actually. We're going to hear from DeMar. He talked about that kind of going back and forth, but then also hear from DeJounte about what DeMar means to this team. What was going shot for shot, you know? We were trying to get a stop. They came with their best, and, you know, we we, we buckled down and, and did the same. They've been on a roll, um, and we needed this game, coming down this stretch of games. He's a talented dude. Uh, you know, I, I respect his game. I respect him as a person, a father. And this game speaks for itself. You know, he's a professional, and he does it every single night. And, and, and DeMar touched on it. They were going back and forth. That's just a nice slam. Yeah, they were going back and forth. But it wasn't like, okay, who's going to make one eventually to win it? It was who's going to miss. Yeah. And, and here's a point that, that a lot of – Sean brought this up last night, but we've talked about this before. You know, you go back and you look at some, some things that happened over the game. Pop got a technical last night. Bradley Beal <laughs> got a technical in the overtime. Mm-hmm. So the Wizards had to have a three to tie to send it to a second overtime last night. And they missed it instead of having a two. And they had time. They got yeah. two shots off. Well, one and a half shots off. But they had time. But but that that technical in overtime. Yeah, little a little. It was kind of, yeah, that, that yeah. point definitely came back to uh, Hunt Washington there. So big picture here, Spurs win their third game in a row. They're now 18 and 10 on the road. We've said they've been playing much better on the road than at home. As we look at the standings uh, real quick, I'm not sure we have the standings. But yeah. We were looking at them before. Spurs now in still in ninth place, David. Yeah, they're not. They're not. It's going to be hard to move up, move down. But it's not. A, there's not a lot of different. Look, look at where the Lakers are, and then yeah. the Mavericks. And the Mavericks are ten and a half back out of first, and the Spurs are only twelve. There's only two games, but they're running out of games. But right. you know, twelve like games I yesterday. Left. Weird things have happened before in the NBA. So why not something weird yeah. happen? This was a big one. Move up. So. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> this is yeah. a big win here. And and here's another thing. They're like seven and they're what what are they uh, seven and three in their last ten? The Spurs. Right. So yeah. they're on a little roll. They had a five game right losing now. streak. They've definitely done yeah. a nice job of yeah. uh, bouncing so, back. Out okay. That. Big news out of Dallas. Yeah. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Sean Lee yesterday, right around the noon show, announced that he right. is retiring from the Dallas Cowboys yeah. after eleven seasons. Actually. I mean, technically it's 11 seasons, but he actually played 10 because he missed the whole season because of an injury. Yeah, and and I think, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to have sort of the recent memory of Sean Lee being hurt a lot last couple of seasons. But in his prime, he was one of the top linebackers in the league. I mean, there were four seasons he had over 100 tackles, two Pro Bowl seasons. I think that's 2015, 2016. So Sean Lee was a warrior out there for the Cowboys and unfortunately had some neck injuries that really kind of derailed his career uh, later on with the Cowboys. But great Cowboy. What's amazing is those stats come with those injuries. He only played one 
16 game season in his career and out of a, I think it was 160 games mm -hmm. he only played 118 but he had some of the best stats you've ever seen as far as linebackers are concerned yeah especially when you look uh, at what the Cowboys had over the years oh yeah definitely the linebackers um, they've ever had eighth all-time Cowboys in tackles and it'll be interesting yeah. that he made this decision because the draft is coming up so I wonder if that kind of led into uh, him just letting the guys know Cowboys need some them. linebackers they need some defensive <laughs> Dude, linemen they need a lot they of help <laughs> we could get another <laughs> Sean Lee the, the <laughs> old school Sean stuff. Lee. yeah, yeah. So. I think they're pretty set on offense, they got they got a good offense. They just need some defensive draft game. coming up later yeah. this week. Oh yeah, there you go, RJ David. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, mm -hmm. guys. Thanks, guys. Let's look outside with live cam. Yeah, rain here and there, but possible severe weather later on. We'll be watching for a couple storms tonight, Steph. Out west, uh, that's a possibility, and we could see some of those become strong to severe. And then tomorrow night, I think we have a decent shot at some strong to severe storms really across the area. So we're going to keep tabs on that. In the meantime, just some showers to deal with. No thunderstorm activity at the moment. And you see it's it's all really light and moving north and east. But we're seeing some of this around northwestern Bear County, Eagle Pass, Del Rio, seeing some light shower activity around Uvalde. We've seen some drizzle too. So overall, just kind of damp and cloudy this morning. Temperature wise, 71 at the airport, 72 rain off, 73 New Braunfels. We still got some 60s on the map too up in the hill country. We should top out in the low 80s today. About a 30% chance of showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder. And then again, we'll watch for some of the stronger storms tonight out west. We'll have a full look at that forecast and we'll take a look at tomorrow too, coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look at Latrans Guide this morning, we're looking at I-35, Ben Zingelman, and I-35, the Loop 410. Things are running smoothly right now. Earlier this morning, we heard from Max Massey at Mitiera, and they have 180 jobs to fill there. Part of a trend across the Alamo City, especially in the hospitality industry. Max Massey joins us live. And Max, what does this need for jobs look like? Well, guys, to put it in perspective, for every resume in the database, there are 3.67 jobs. So there is a big need. We're joined here with Adrian Lopez, the CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo. So from your perspective, what does mm -hmm. the need look like in the hospitality industry? Yeah, so they literally have thousands of jobs that are available today, and many more are going to be opening up as we move towards the summer months. Uh, but to give you just a sort of an overall perspective of uh, like the job market, from October to uh, March, October of last year to March of this year, and all of the industries, we had about 40,000 postings. So there's thousands of jobs out there for people who are willing to work. Wow, now this is the second mainstream job fair that you guys hosted in just the last couple of months. So what has the last few months looked like in terms of filling these jobs? Yeah, so at the height of the pandemic, we were at about 14% unemployment. Today, we're just a little uh, lower than that, about 6.8%. So we're headed in the right direction. There's many new jobs that are gonna be coming up. There's a lot more consistency with these types of jobs. And so I think we're headed in the right direction. So from 14 to 6.8, and remind us one time, what was it before the pandemic? Oh, it's about 3% pre-pandemic, right? So we're not at exactly at uh, pre-pandemic levels, but we're headed in the right direction. Okay, and last question for you. Next week is another job fair. What should people know about it? Yeah, so we're partnering with many of the local employers. Today we're here at Miquera Restaurant. Today they have 180 postings uh, or positions that are open. So uh, next week we're uh, partnering with local chambers and employers both in the hotel and restaurant association, uh, or industries rather. Uh, so May 4th it'll be a virtual um, uh, event, and then May 5th will be an in-person event. All right, Mr. Lopez, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions on how to register, how to take part, we have all those answers, just head to KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Max. 940, about 72 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And a dog up for adoption in New Jersey went viral when his foster mom described him as a 13-pound rage machine. After the break, we meet the woman who is giving him for a forever home. 944, you may remember a few weeks ago, we told you about my spirit animal, this dog named Prancer. A uh, viral adoption ad called him a Chucky doll in a dog's body. And this morning, we are happy to report that Prancer was adopted. ABC's Will Gann spoke to his new owner to find out how he's adjusting to his new home. This is Prancer, though he's also been referred to as a 13-pound rage machine and a Chucky doll in a dog's body. The two-year-old Chihuahua going viral thanks to an adoption ad shared on Facebook nearly 80,000 times. 
Prancer's foster mom, Tiffany Fortuna, writing the hilarious post in the hopes of attracting enough attention to find him a forever home. Even after calling Prancer a vessel for a traumatized Victorian child, it worked. I read through it and it just really touched me. Um, a lot of what Prancer was going through reminded me of a dog that I had about three or four years ago. Ariel Davis, who lives in Connecticut, driving all the way to Second Chance Pet Adoption in New Jersey to meet Prancer. I kind of felt like I was going on a first date. <laughs> but after a little while, Prancer perked up, becoming fast friends with Ariel, who took him home that day. He looks like such a little cuddle bug. I think he's a lot um, calmer now that he's in like a single dog situation. The duo have spent the last week getting into a routine. It's really nice to come home to somebody that's just so excited to see me. Ariel admitting that her new furry friend can be a little protective over her, but it's nowhere close to the quote, demonic chihuahua hellscape described in the viral post. I understand and I appreciate the um, article that was written, you know, that started all of this. But um, he's just not that bad. <laughs> he's just a real sweetheart. Ariel saying her life has already changed for the better. I've been looking for a dog for about three months. Seeing him, you know, I felt like I'd waited for a reason. Mm, we'll kiss. Uh. The shelter says Tiffany's hilarious post did more good than just introducing Prancer to Ariel. In fact, 10 other dogs have been adopted since his post went viral. And there are more meetings scheduled for other dogs with bigger personalities later this week. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. So is a possible Prancer just kind of bad rap? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. He just needed a second chance. Oriana, if we get a Jeannie Moe's version of this, can we run it? Awesome. Uh, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. I want to see Jeannie's take on, <laughs> on Prancer getting a, 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 a forever home. Yes, on your spirit animal. My spirit animal, Prancer. <laughs> that was That's just, amazing. Even Justin's laughing. I'm going to send him some <laughs> treats. Aww. He seems like such a sweet dog, though. Yeah, I love the, the cute little pictures. Yes. Yeah. Seems very happy now, too. Good. Yes. yes. Good for Prancer. To the story. <laughs> uh, well, guys, we're hoping for some, uh, some rain next couple days. The one thing we don't want is severe weather. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think it's that time of year. It's probably going to come with a little bit of severe weather. Not today, though. Right now, we're just seeing some showers. Radar shows light shower activity Del Rio down to Eagle Pass. And across parts of Alberta County, seeing maybe some moderate rain, but not a lot here around San Antonio, at least at the moment. I think as some energy works its way across the area today, we will see some isolated showers, some widely scattered showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder. A little closer look here at Barrett County, and most everything we're seeing is very, very light. There's some drizzle out there, too. Uh, and we've seen that through much of the morning. Let's look at the forecast here, and this is just one of our computer models, but I think it has a pretty good handle on it. This is around 5 o'clock today, shows some showers working through, maybe a few rumbles of thunder. As we get towards 10 o'clock tonight, show some bigger storms erupting out west, so places like Del Rio, parts of Alberta County to the north along I-10. That's where we could see some stronger, maybe severe storms. And this model does bring that cluster of storms towards San Antonio, probably weakening as it does, but we could see some rain, some storms overnight. So that's round number one that we want to watch. As we get into tomorrow, things quiet down a little bit in the morning, and then we start to see storms erupt out west again. This is 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and these storms could very quickly become strong to severe and then it looks like they'll form into a cluster and once again work their way east towards I-35. This is 10 p.m. tomorrow night. I think this is probably our better chance. We'll have a front coming through too. So showers and storms are likely the potential for some large hail, some gusty winds. Those are all things we're going to have to watch. So keep that uh, KSAT weather app nearby. We'll let you know if there's any alerts that uh, will be put out. In the meantime, this is the risk for severe weather today, and this area is shaded in yellow is a slight risk. So on a scale of one to five, we're talking about a two, uh, but it's, it's, it's still there, and I think out west, that's where we really need to watch. It, it does transition a little bit further east as we get into tomorrow, and does include San Antonio for Wednesday as some of those storms work their way towards the I-35 corridor. Now, the other side to this is rainfall. We, we, we love the rain. We need the rain. Half an inch to an inch, I think, on average with some of these showers and storms. Now, obviously, if you get underneath a heavier thunderstorm, these numbers will go up some. But two inches potentially across the hill country and underneath the stronger storms, there could be some spots that do take on some flooding. Right now, 
Uh, we're looking at 71 degrees at the airport. Cloudy skies, southeasterly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Still some mist out there in spots. 69 degrees, Bandera, 71 Comfort, 73 Hondo, 75 Castroville, 73 right now at Stinson. It's going to be a warm day, but with all the cloud cover, uh, we'll probably only make it into the low 80s this afternoon. And look at the dew point, 60s and 70s. So there's plenty of fuel for these showers and storms to work with. And the forecast for today, we'll just keep it at a 30% chance of showers, maybe a rumble of thunder. Temperatures up around 83 for a high. And the extended forecast will go 30% chance of storms tonight here in San Antonio. Your risk out west is a little higher. 30% chance tomorrow, and then our best chance Wednesday night, Thursday morning, 70% chance of storms, some of which could be strong, and then it'll turn breezy and clear out on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. At this point, look clear, and the temperatures will start to warm up back into the 90s by the end of the weekend and next week, guys. Wow, what a change. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now it's 10 till 10, 72 degrees. And despite a claim circulating on social media, President Joe Biden's climate plan would not set limits on how much red meat you can eat. After the break, we take a look at some of the things the plan will do. And welcome back. It's 954. A post circulating on social media claims that President Joe Biden's climate plan would force people to reduce their red meat intake by 90 percent. Claim says people would only be allowed to eat four pounds of meat a year. It's about a burger a month. Governor Greg Abbott even shared the Twitter post over the weekend. But the case at Trust Index determined the claim is not true. President Biden did pledge to cut greenhouse gas emissions by up to 52 percent by 2030, and his proposed infrastructure bill does include roughly $1 trillion on clean energy and climate change. But the measures offered from the White House so far include no mention of mandatory dietary restrictions. So where did this false claim come from? You can read about it right now on KSAT.com. Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Elizabeth Moss joins us. She'll tell us all about season four of The Handmaid's Tale. See you soon on live. And taking a look out with Trans Guide this morning. Let's take a look at I-10 at Crossroads and 90 at General McMullen. Things look good right now. We're at 72 degrees, 83 this afternoon, 30% chance of some showers. We'll see a few storms tonight, too, especially out west. We'll watch for the threat of some severe weather. Best chance of storms Wednesday night. Thursday morning. We'll be here to track any severe weather. I right, grab a pen and paper. We've got a great idea. We want you to go out and buy a birthday card and get it to this uh, lady. Irene Wilson lives here in San Antonio. Yeah, she's celebrating her 106th birthday tomorrow. Wow. That's right, April 28th. Mm -hmm. She's lived through the Depression, World War II, and now through COVID. She moved here in San Antonio uh, when her husband uh, moved here. Uh, actually, she moved here to be closer to her youngest daughter. But yes. she's about turned 106. But here's the address where you can send her a birthday card. Yeah, Irene Wilson. That's uh, Kara Porsche, activities directors at the Franklin Park Alamo Heights. Uh, that's 230 West Sunset. So write that down. Uh, so she actually, uh, yes, yeah, she has a connection to San Antonio because her husband, Dr. Richard Wilson, was stationed at Fort Sam during World War II. Wow. They were married for 69 years before he passed away, but her home over there in Alamo Heights wanted to get her 106 cards for her birthday tomorrow, and I bet they'll go over 106. I think so. Bye, guys.